it's Amelia. I'm doing a video that I didn't think I would be making halfway through the year. This is sort of the reason why Pan That Palette is not going to happen for me next year and also a little bit of why I actually do appreciate and like the project as a whole. Um, I wrote out a short rough draft of what I wanted to say last night and I realized I think it's better if I talk about why I like Pan That Palette before I go into why I'm not going to be doing it next year or potentially for the next few years. I do see myself doing it again eventually, but um, so I don't have a checklist with me that I plan to write out of all the points I want to talk about, but I do have videos that I filmed before where I talk about things I've learned from Pan That Palette. I hope that if you are confused as to why I'm doing this, that you can watch those and see that Pan That Palette is something I appreciate because the last thing I want is people to interpret this as me hating on the idea because that's not the case at all. Um, Pan That Palette for me is a project where you get to really understand who you are in terms of your makeup and you learn a lot about yourself and about what you want from your collection. Obviously, like, I'm talking about makeup, so this isn't like serious, deep, personal stuff or anything, like it's just makeup, but I still feel like there are things that have impacted my life from this that go beyond just makeup. I've talked about it before mostly on my Instagram, but um, I have anxiety and growing up um, I feel like I always had anxiety, but it didn't show itself in the same way it does now. Um, I was never diagnosed, but I'm fairly certain I was legitimately had hoarding disorder as a child. Like, I was literally a hoarder. Um, and not to get into it, but I feel like Pan That Palette and Project Panning and Declutter videos as like a 12-year-old watching YouTube really helped me. There were other things before that, but those videos really helped me apply ideas of only having what you want and knowing what you want and not just buying things to buy them or keeping things to keep them. Um, I feel like that wasn't a full sentence, but I think you get what I'm trying to say. Basically, I, I it helps me and it has helped me with my hoarding issue, which is not really an issue anymore. It's very under control now. Um, I'm, I still struggle to give things away, but I'm taking in less, so then it's easier to make those decisions because I don't own as much. With makeup, I really thought I wanted a huge makeup collection in the beginning because I started watching YouTube and all these people had a ton of makeup and I was just learning how to do makeup. Like, I was watching tutorials to try and figure out how to use my dollar store makeup because I wasn't sure and like that's where it all started and then I saw people with all these high-end products and I didn't even know what Sephora was um and I didn't even know what Ulta was until like two years ago so like it was this thing where as someone who has anxiety shopping and hoarding was sort as a child was a way for me to have less anxiety but also I've always just been someone who's like there's no such thing as too much. Like, more is always more. It's always better. Then I came across Pink So Foxy, who did a declutter series, and that series changed my life in a lot of ways, and I don't even know how to put it into words, but it changed my thought process. Like, you know how when you, maybe you don't know, but like when you go to therapy, you learn new ways of thinking and behaving, like cognitive behavioral therapy? For me, Watching declutter videos and implementing those ideas into my life was a form of that. Um, and now I think very critically about the makeup I bring into my collection and I feel in control of my spending and I feel in control of my possessions. Whereas as a child and going into young adulthood, everything had sentimental value. I feel like that led into makeup for me because it was like I wanted everything because I was watching videos and everything was like everybody who made videos was like oh this is the best thing you need it or um whatever 
And, you know, I got caught up in the hype, especially as a younger person. And so I would buy all these things or I'd, I'd get my parents to buy these things. And it this was before I even touched high-end stuff. Like, I was buying drugstore stuff. And I just could not let it go. Ping So Foxy's Declutter Series especially showed me you don't have to have a large makeup collection. Fast forward to now, well, a few years ago, so I was getting into Pan That Palette because I had a set number of eyeshadow palettes that I really liked and I felt like I just had my favorites and then I had excess. I stumbled across Amber F's Pan That Palette series and I just, it clicked with me. I was like, yeah, I have the, like these palettes and they have no use out of them. And I feel, that was also starting at the time where I was starting to distrust beauty gurus. And I felt like everything was just making sense to me. I remember she was specifically talking about, like, she wants her palette to either look used or have pan, or she was saying she would like people who are reviewing these products to show use because otherwise it's just going to sit there and expire and it's like how do you even know what your opinion is when you rarely use it. I, it all just resonated with me so much so I started panning and my thought process was I'll pan what I don't really want in my collection and I'll be left with what I do like. What happened was um, I continue to buy things when I'm panning and I continue to change my opinions. So for example, in the beginning, my Naked and Naked 2 were some of my favorite, these were my favorite palettes. And I had, I think it's called Shaney Cosmetics, I had like a 99 shadow set. And I was like, oh, I'm going to pan this, and then I'll just be left with my two favorites. Or maybe I just had this at the time. Whatever. So I was like, I got the idea to start using up my makeup so I could have my perfect collection and what happens is as I'm panning time goes on I'm asking for more gifts because I'm watching more videos of people hyping up products years go by now I'm finally using the two palettes that I was like these are my favorite and if you've been following me with my updates you'll notice these are not my favorites anymore and it kind of makes me sad because it's like I could have used them when I loved them. Like, when these were the best eyeshadows I had, I could have been enjoying them. I was, I'm still continuing this year's project, by the way, but I was thinking about it and I was like, I'm doing the same thing now. Like, I started Pan That Palette before I even started my Instagram in like 2014 or whatever. And I'm like, okay, like, is this, is this a cycle I'm still continuing? And I really am because, like, for example, this is my new Skinny Dip Palette. This is my favorite palette, at the moment at least, but in my mind, of all time. And like it's new, you know, like this is just sitting there while I'm panning these. And then I have my Anastasia quads, Anastasia Beverly Hills. And these are some of my favorites. And I have mats from Busy Art, which are also my favorites. And I'm not using them because I'm panning. Then I have, I don't have the other ones down, but I have my Stila Glitter and Glows. Um, I like, I have a ton of eyeshadows. These aren't even all of them. I just, just sitting right here, I have all of these that are not getting used because I'm painting something that I'm not in love with anymore. And I just feel like, I was thinking about it and I was like, if I'm always panning to get to the point where my collection is perfect, I'm never going to have the perfect collection because this cycle of shopping and getting, or asking for gifts and getting more in than what I can use up in a year. My numbers are never going down no matter how much I finish. Um, and I continuously have products that are my favorites that sit and wait until I realize they're no longer favorites. Because I'm sure even though these are like my favorite um, like shimmer type shadows and like this is my favorite kind of matte, I'm sure in a few years from now there'll be even more metallic things or even better mattes. And then these won't be favorites, but I've missed the opportunity to use them while I'm in love with them. And it's just a little frustrating. I'm frustrated with myself because I watch myself do it. Maybe the best decision would be to use what I have intentionally using 
them to maybe hit pan or something next year, which is something I've been thinking about already. I can continue panning for the rest of my life and my collection is never going to be perfect because there's always going to be more things that I want or I'm going to change my mind about products. And I realized my collection is as close to perfect right now as I'm going to get it. Um, and yes, if I were to finish my two naked palettes, buy singles if I want them of dupes from these for things I really like, and if I finish my Tarte palette, then my collection would almost be perfect, but then there's a couple ABH shadows that I still want, and then there's like brands like Davina or Luxy that are like indie brands I want to try. So like there's still more to do and there's still more to buy. But like I have my Skinny Dip palette, I have six, no, 17 Anastasia shadows, I have a Viseart palette, I have my Steel of Glitters, and they're just sitting there. And I'm panning palettes that I've changed my mind about in a lot of ways. So I'm just feeling like I'm wasting precious time because everything expires, you know, so I'm starting to feel like panning old products is stupid. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just feel like if I had decided to pan these a handful of years ago, yes, I would have had more eyeshadows because I would have had, like, I still would have been in possession of the Vice 3 or Pulp Fiction palette or other palettes that I've panned. But I would have maybe loved these when I still loved them and then maybe I would have decluttered something like I maybe I would have decluttered the vice 3 or maybe I would have returned it and got the $60 back and then who's to say that I still wouldn't have bought this so I just feel like I'm wasting all of my makeup has an expiration date right like it might not be the time that the company say but like for example say this has seven years before it starts to go bad I'm wasting those seven years because I'm panning other things. I get bored very easily with my makeup. Um, and I just feel like I need to not do this, use the same look every single day kind of thing, which I like to do for panning, but when it comes to enjoying my makeup, it's not working anymore. I would like to next year use everything, jump around, maybe hit pan on things as a goal, but not specifically pan a specific product like I know a lot of people will switch it to being like oh I'm gonna pan my favorite thing but if you're using your favorite thing every single day no matter how much you love it I feel like you're still gonna get bored at some point so it's sort of like a cycle of teaching myself to dislike makeup and then have the makeup I do like sitting in the back of my collection I'm forgetting what I have I'm panning things that I no longer love, or I'm starting to use things that I hadn't, that I had put off a long time, and now realizing that I don't love. It's just frustrating because I did this to myself. Like, I went from a cycle of hoarding and shopping and hoarding and shopping into a cycle of panning and not enjoying it, and buying things and then putting them away, and then panning things I don't enjoy, putting things away, and I almost put it into this little category in my brain of my favorite makeup so like for a long time these were in my favorite makeup category in my mind and I sort of hype them up beyond what they are like I was like oh I love my Urban Decay shimmers and when I finish painting this I get to use them and they're neutrals and I build it up in my head as these are really amazing and then when I start using them I'm like these aren't what I remember and I think it's because in my mind I built them up to be something they never were and it's because I haven't been using them. And I know a lot of people aren't going to like me saying this. Or they're going to like... I don't know. I just... A lot of people with very large... In my opinion, compared to me, very large collections are panning old makeup that they don't necessarily like. And to be quite honest, if you have more than like 15 eyeshadow palettes, or even if you have 15 eyeshadow palettes... I don't think you're going to be able to get your collection down to what you want it to be through Pan That Palette and Project Pans. Unless it's like all of them are like very small amounts of eyeshadow that are powdery and you go through quick like Modern Renaissance or something like that. If they're all in that vein, then yes, maybe you could. But if you have palettes like the Naked Palettes where they're very dense 
Um, it takes a long time to go through even one shadow. Honestly, if you're looking to shape your collection as something you love and not have your favorites expire, you're going to have to start decluttering. And I'm, I'm not saying that like you have to. I'm just saying, I'm saying this for me because I include myself in this where it's like, it, you can't pan everything because it's all, something is going to expire. And really, you're choosing between, am I going to have the things I love expire or am I going to let the things I don't love as much expire? Because something is going to. It's not like you can just pan everything before it goes old. It's just not possible. I don't even see that being possible for me. And I have like less than 10 palettes. I have a lot of, I count my inventory through numbers. So like I have around 90 something shadows. And something is going to expire for my collection if I don't declutter. I sort of bought into this false idea that if I just keep panning, eventually my collection will be perfect. And then I can just use it as I want and love it. I was thinking about it, I was like, if I continue this, when am I going to be able to use my perfect collection? The answer is I can either use it in 2019 and start enjoying what I love, regardless of what excess stuff that I don't love I own, or I can never have my perfect collection because it'll never happen. I sort of tricked myself into thinking if I keep panning and then I go on a no buy at the same time for eyeshadow maybe then I can get my numbers down to just my perfect collection and you, for some people I think that might actually work depending on how many shadows you have and the kind of shadows you have and how long like how much you makeup you wear and th all those factors for me um, I don't see that happening I see what's going to happen is if I were to continue what I'm doing pan these not enjoy them like I would have Pick something else to pan, not enjoy it like I would have. Down the line, like my favorites, I think this quad and this quad are my favorites. So let's say down the line, these are like a year away from expiring. And I'm going to pan them, and I'm going to stick to them, and then I'm not going to enjoy them because I'm going to get bored easily. Like, you see what I mean? Um, and I understand like some people enjoy panning. I do. I think I've put myself, I've sort of set up my own rules about how I pan and how frequently I use things and all this to the point where I forced myself to not enjoy it. And I think I do that a lot in my life because I'm a perfectionist and I want to, I come up with an idea of what I think would be perfect and what the right thing to do is for me and for whatever. And then I end up being in a position where I don't even like what I'm doing. But then I'm also very stubborn, so like I would never be the one to say I'm going to stop a project or something like that. And I have switched products around in my project pans, which is a big step for me. But it's not the same as truly accepting the realization that something's going to expire. And I have to either declutter it so someone else can use it up before that happens, or I have to accept that it's going to expire and I might as well use what I love instead. Um... I set up this year so that I could take weekends to use what I love, and I haven't been doing that, so I'm going to start doing that. But going forward, um, I want to use them in a way that I love where I'm not getting bored. Because what is the point of makeup if you're bored or don't enjoy it? Glitter shit that I'm putting on my eye is not a necessity, so why am I turning it into a punishment where I have to use things in a certain way so that I can meet a certain goal that I've made up? Like, it doesn't make sense at all, and I don't know why I'm doing it. Um, I do want to continue using my naked palettes and use them in a way I enjoy and not in a way I dislike. And I think the reason I was getting disheartened with it is because in the beginning of the year, I labeled them all with tape on the top. Um, I don't know if you can see of the ones that I think are my favorites. And what I've realized is the ones that are my favorites aren't necessarily my favorites anymore. Oh, someone's calling me. Hold on. I had to stop filming because someone called me and I was thinking, I've rambled a lot about why I'm changing this. I feel like a lot of you will at least, if you don't feel the same, will at least understand where I'm coming from with why I'm doing, why I'm changing up how I'm doing things. So I wanted to make sure I spend a little time talking about what I love about Pan That Palette because I don't want it to seem like I'm shitting on it. Let me know if you've been feeling similarly or whatever. I'm still 
disclaimer, I'm still a Project Panner. I don't know what else to say, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.